All right. Thank you guys for joining us here on our monthly Zoom webinar. I'm not sure. Yeah, we've been doing one about every month, and we're excited to be joined by uh, Clay Reisler. That is correct. Yeah, it's in, uh, I practiced that all week, all weekend uh, in Pulaski, Wisconsin, and we connected through Twitter, which is so awesome, and I've built a relationship, and we have not met in person, and so that's a beautiful part about social media, and uh, he took a chance on, on using, trying out Class Intercom, and so we're excited to share his story and what he's been doing the last two months, basically, two and a half months about, uh, they started March 1st. And just share with uh, other schools, this will be recorded. We have Heather with Grand Island Northwest, who's on live to ask some questions. Just share what they've learned and how things have evolved for them and getting students involved in their social media at Pulaski. And, and they're going to layer this in lots of different areas of their school across the district. And, and they use the high school to start. And so I'll let Clay kind of introduce himself and share a little bit about who he is. And then uh, we can go ahead and dive in and just kind of talk about how you attack this from the beginning, and then we can dive into some of the stats and how things have changed on your guys' Twitter feed for the high school. And then I've got a bunch of questions to ask you and uh, really dive into this. So I'll go ahead and let you take it from there, Clay. Awesome. Uh, Clay Reisler, Pulaski High School. We're a school of 1,058 students in a rural setting, and I am the digital learning specialist. And I actually saw Heather and I saw Josh Allen and how they were using class intercom and it was exactly what I wanted because in the fall of 2016 we actually did a huge interview process through a Twitter takeover and I learned about that through Craig Badura and we did a lengthy interview process and they handed me the phone and I still typed the password in and then I handed their phone back and I really had no control for the day and we had good engagement with that but I still didn't have that control and I'm not an authoritative freak on this but it is our our school's reputation our district's reputation and then when I saw Heather and Josh uh, really talking about class intercom I said I need to get in touch with that uh, it is exactly what we wanted and so as I told you in the past, just minus a few, I think we had five total kids take over a Twitter takeover. Minus that, we had three boring adults that were taking care of the Twitter feed, and I was one of them. And I really didn't quite understand where our direction was. You could clearly see that we were just posting our agenda. We were just posting this, this, this was happening. No personality. And truthfully, what even got more kicked off is uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. We started following them, and uh, they have huge personality on their Twitter. And I mean huge personality. Another, uh, that kind of got the ball rolling with me, why couldn't our Twitter feed be that way, be uh, just more engaging and have a personality? And then I got in touch with Class Intercom. And as I said, I have some specific statistics on that. When in February and in January, we had low impression rates. And then in uh, March when we started and April blew up and uh, May is already blowing up. And it's all because we have an army, that's what I call it, an army of students and staff. And I'd be really uh, interested in telling that story to you on how we did it. Yep. And, and then we have what are called power users. So if you want me to get into that right now, I can. Yeah, yeah I'll kind of I'll kind of cue it up. And so uh, when we first met, uh, you guys were looking at, we talked to your administration and just kind of rolling this out. And the key to this whole process and how what we've been learning and Heather has done the same thing is starting small and starting with a group of of students and having a evangelist is what I would call you, Clay and Heather and Josh someone that is actively engaging students in it. The, when we have schools, it just admin just says, here you go students, here's your account. And then they just have no involvement. They're, they're not producing any content. This is something they've never done before. And so that's what I just wanna give you a shout out to, to really, and then um, I think it's, is it Ben Otto or? Ben Otto is our marketing teacher. Yeah, yeah. and so I'll let you dive into that. I think you've got him involved. And so you've got some key pieces involved that I think can really provide some good um, insight to other schools and how to really launch this and then sustain it because that's 
that's what we are really focused on right now is, is continuing that process, getting kids to understand the value of creating this content. You've done a great job of doing that. Well, thank you. Um, my biggest thing is I wanted to target really four different areas, five if you count staff members. So I targeted our yearbook staff because our yearbooks only come out once a year, but they're producing content all the time. They're making a page. They're taking an awesome photo. So we've really tried to um, tell them this is a great way to promote your final product that you're going to have. Then we chose our Pulaski News students, and our Pulaski News students are, we have a, a very, very long running community newspaper that's created by only students. And so obviously they were looking for a way to bring their newspaper to the 21st century. And so that was a targeted group. The other targeted group was our Raider Strong Network, which is our first year uh, broadcasting we're gonna do graduation, we've done live announcements. Next year, we're morphing into a class called the Study of Broadcast Journalism. So right. they were a group. And then um, finally, our marketing students who are trying to really get real world experiences and they're doing fundraising and amazing stuff with social media. And then I stood in front of our staff and I told uh, 68 of our staff members how we need to tell our story because if we don't, no one will. And truthfully, uh, they gravitated towards that because we had some very negative publicity uh, a couple of years back by a, someone's cell phone uh, recording a fight that happened in our cafeteria. And of course, that went viral. Um, and we really didn't have any positive before that that was on social media. So now if something negative would happen, obviously we've built so much positive with that. But I started with all of that. So if you look at that, we have roughly 65, 68 staff members enrolled in class intercom. Uh, we have a total, because some of these kids overlap, we have a total of about 40 students enrolled. Now, what's been unique is that is that in what has been unique in that is our power users have taken over. So we have about six to seven that are contributing. And I still like talking to the 30 students that are part of our, our huge group because they have so many different uh, tentacles out there on our, on our high school life. But our six power users are the ones who have really found a niche. We have someone who promotes our um, events. And I believe, Heather, I got that from, from you or, or Josh, one of the two. But we have, uh, he produces some uh, Canva graphics that gets produced out there. Then we have a girl who's not connected with anything in our school. And one of the things that we've tried to do is really target the kids who are not connected in any way. So she was not connected in any way. She's one of the 100 students that we're trying to target. And she puts out um, a a good luck thing, a, a go get them thing every Friday of an upcoming event. Awesome. Um, yeah. And so she's found a voice and just like stuff like that makes me just get excited. Um, so we really started with an army and we're kind of also having that power user. If I showed you a graphic that has really helped us, could I do that? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right. So I'm just going to show you um, a graphic and can you see my screen? Absolutely, beautiful. So our, our art teacher, um, if I can just get some, a little bit of patience, I'm working at it. Our art teacher created this. So these are some of our <laughs> students and then he blacked them out. So it can really be anybody. So uh, two of the people on this screen are actually our power users, but uh, three of them are just part of the army. And so, they aren't as active, but we've really tried to promote this. And then the power users are starting to, uh, and I think I'm taking this from Heather or Josh, I get confused, but starting uh, Craig to- at Aurora, Craig at Aurora had, had a picture of their team and did yes. a graphic like this too. Yes, and what I'm trying to say is, and this is my move for next year, is if a person, like one of our power, power users, say that it's from you. Uh, put your uh, Twitter handle on there because now you start to build your resume and and Brock is the guy that I'm uh, uh, Brock G. He's from our school. Uh, I'm really impressed by the stuff that he's so excited about doing. Um, 
and so I'm, I, I want to start promoting him as well in this whole thing. I love that. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at with um, how we started with the big army and we're kind of down to the power users. We also have um, two staff members that are power users as well. Awesome. So what you've kind of rolled this out in the high school. We'll talk about kind of the roadmap. I know you just tweeted something about it out to your middle school, you guys have different lo different buildings. Yes, sir. And your role is around the whole district, but what have you learned uh, from the high school kind of rollout that you're now applying to the middle school and then eventually the, the district accounts as well that you'll be integrating? That's a great uh, thing. So I did roll it out with the high school and the things that I learned are the things that I applied to our middle school students last Wednesday. Yeah. Witty wittiness sells. I, I have learned that when kids start to become witty and they create cool poll questions and stuff like that, that sells. I'm also learning that emojis sell. I'm learning that gifts sell. I'm learning that graphics sell. I'm learning that interviews sell. Uh, I'm learning that polls sell. And so what I applied to the middle school students, what I, which is what I did not apply right away to the high school students, are just that. So have these things in your posts, in your tweets when you post. That is what's going to get you noticed. And that isn't all what we're about, but our high school kids love it when uh, Brock tweets out something and he gets 28 likes. Uh, that's motivation. So that is what I transferred over to our middle school students, which I didn't know right away with our high school students. Right. And I want to touch on that a little bit before we dive into the analytics. But I think one of the things we're seeing is, is what is the incentive to these kids to post about their school, right? For, we've kind of discovered that they don't know what to post. And now you figured out what kind of engages them and it's the content that they enjoy. And so how do you craft that for your school? Um, and then seeing the response. So how are you communicating that? Or does that just happen naturally? Or did you provide some training, training to them? Or did they just, that just naturally happened? And then you kind of observed and listened. And now you're able to, to share that. I love kind of what you noticed, the progression over the last couple months. Yep. So honestly, I started um, well with my son, Brock, the other, yeah. the other Brock. He took over the uh, Ohio baseball account and he was noticing when there was a game and stuff that he would put gifts. A lot of people would get um, involved and engaged. Well, then I said, well, what, a, and I'm a huge sports guy. So I said, what other sports uh, accounts are engaging and Vegas golden Knights is very engaging. And then um, I jumped on the UMBC uh, retreaters yeah. on that night and I noticed what he was doing and people just loved it uh, subsequently since then him and I have developed a, re a relationship over Twitter which has been amazing but I just started investigating what accounts do really well um, I couldn't take the Wendy's one I don't know if you've seen the Wendy's yeah. account but they're very rude kind of and so we can't do that but but what I really learned about was uh, just that opportunity for a personality. Absolutely. Uh, Heather asks what, what the kids, where they're getting gifts. Is that Giphy? G-I-F-G-I-P-H-Y? Uh, Good question. So our marketing students, uh, they, are, they were required to make their own gifts, and they, yes, used that. Um, but they're also just looking if you if you have Twitter on your phone or Twitter on here, they're using those gifts that are already provided and just applying them. But kids love that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and uh, truthfully, our audience does as well. So we just dabbled with our marketing students to create their own. And that has actually been kind of fun. Um, those kids are are really not just using class intercom most of those gifts that they've used have put on their own twitter feeds which is okay uh we're still learning but um those are the two areas where we have found gifts awesome yeah i think you can copy and paste a link um and then bring it in i've seen several schools do that we don't have a uh, giphy um, integration but i know that's as that continues to increase and we continue to get feedback we'll definitely you know, take a look at that. If that makes that easier. Go ahead. 
One thing that I uh, maybe can offer to other people, so polls and gifts aren't totally accessible through class intercom. Right. So what kids have done is they have sent me and what they want, and then I publish it. So they're still doing it. It's the workaround. It's the hack that we've come up with so that they can still do the polls and stuff like that. And with all technology, I'm sure that's coming soon. Um, but that's something the, uh, that we've found. Yeah, that's, that's a great um, feature for that. Josh says they use notes um, in Class Intercom for things like that. Josh, you want to expand on that? So you put maybe a link to a GIF and then you can, the student can, and then you can add it in or um, love to expand on that a little bit um, as we go. So you haven't, you know, one of the things, um, one of the things that we've seen too is, is students not, not kind of knowing what to post and things like that. You have not had that issue because you really targeted a, an audience in your school and you've, I love power users using that term. Um, is that the case or did you have to go through some, some training with the students and go, Hey, here's kind of what we're looking for to kind of understand kind of the voice and make sure things are consistent. Take us through that process and then we'll dive into analytics. Okay. So each one of the groups that I mentioned, yearbook, Pulaski news, marketing, Raider strong, and then our staff, I really told them your niche can be your area. So your book is covering this promote you. Um, I also really talked about um, promoting our story. You think about it, all the clubs in our school are student driven. All the sports are student driven. Yes, they have coaches. Yes, they adv have advisors, but the kids are directing it. What did we do with social media? We did all adult driven. And so it's been resonating with people and especially with students, listen, this isn't our high school. This is your high school. And by our, I mean uh, adults. It, it's your high school. You need to tell your story and you have that uh, opportunity. And the other thing that I've really tried to emphasize with students is you spend an hour with your thumb scrolling up all the time and watching other people's content. You don't have to do that anymore. You can be your content. And I kind of got that idea from Gary V. Yeah. At, at Vayner Media. He's just said, basically, and I'm giving the clean version. He just said, you need to, Thank you. Tell, yeah, you need to tell your story. And the kids have just gravitated towards that. Cool. So as I said, um, we have a musical person, we have an art person, Sophia. She is all about promoting the arts and that's her niche. That's what she wants. Uh, it's kind of just lent itself to, to them finding their niche, but I was talking about them telling their story and their story is their high school. Fantastic. Cool. And, and as a result of that, the ownership that they've taken over and, and the ability for them to contribute that content, let's take a, let's go back to March 1st and, and you've had some big events happen. You've like probably missed a month of school out of that with blizzards and snow days, right? Um, which is contribute that, but take us through what the analytics you could share that share your screen and just kind of the neat things you've seen as a result of students kind of um, being a part of the social media content at Pulaski. So let me just give you a few numbers and then I will kind of talk about um, maybe I'll share my screen. We can, okay. go from there. but uh, in February and subsequently five years before that we had three adults taking care of, of Twitter feed for the most part. In February, we had 21,000 in impressions. And an impression, from my understanding, is when it crosses someone's screen. It doesn't mean they're engaging with it, doesn't mean they're clicking on it, but it crosses someone's screen, they've seen it. Uh, we never, in any term, ever went over 40,000 uh, impressions in any adult-driven Twitter life. <laughs> so I turned it over and in March, uh, we went to 57,000 impressions. And this is the, the real kicker. In April, we went to 102,000. Holy impressions. smokes. Yeah. And, and what's went up is the amount of tweets. We've increased our tweets 400%. And I think wow. about that. That's simply because of the fact that we have an army of people doing it. And it's not just me or it's not just our assistant principal. 
And so the amount of tweets has contributed to those impressions. I get that part, but we want to be on the forefront of people's social media life. Um, our profile visits are up 91%. So that means more people are looking at Pulaski High School. Um, our mentions are up 96% because the people that I'm talking about uh, or talking with and are, are part of our army also have their personal accounts. So they're adding us at PCSD underscore PHS. And then our followers are up about 23. So I get that we don't have a huge increase in followers, um, but some things that are, that are amazing as well, we had engagements. So we had a tweet that had an engagement of 347 in February to 500. We, have, we had three tweets over 500 in engagement which wow. means they clicked on it and did something with it uh, in either March or April. So the, the thing that I guess is validating because um, our, our administration believe in social media and that was a really nice feature, but we now have the data to yeah. back it up. And, and I guess that's been the real nice validation for me and for our administration because it, it does cost and I get that part, but it's been so worth it. Fantastic. And let's give some context. Um, your Pulaski High School Twitter account has today 629 followers. And so give, give people some context about the size of your district. I know you kind of did at the beginning, but just to give to compare uh, for people to kind of compare their following and, and how I mean, at some point, you reach kind of a, a maximum that people are going to follow you unless you turn into a, you know, Maryland, uh, okay. UM. UMBC, whatever, uh, yeah, UMBC kind of account, then you kind of blow up. But right. realistically, for high schools, you kind of have that kind of number. Is Are you guys satisfied with that? So I'll let you take it from there. So we, we're looking at 1,058 students. Uh, we have over 3,000 total students. We have a huge geographical area. So the one thing that we struggle with is we have as I said, a huge geographical area. So people don't always relate with the town of Pulaski where our high school is. So we have five outlying elementaries and they have their pocket community. So one thing that I think we need to do a better job of is engaging with the elementary accounts as a high school account and doing that engagement. So we see a choir concert and we're like future Pulaski High School students can't wait for you to get here and show showcase. We haven't got to that point yet, but I think that's how we could increase our uh, following for Pulaski High School. Um, if that answers the question, from my recollection of what the question was, I believe um, yeah. we're, we're, we're okay with 600, obviously. Uh, we're okay with any number. That means there's 600 people that are hearing our story. But I think in the future, and we're actually going to turn this social media team into a club next year. Uh, sure. Our main power user said, well, can we make this a club? I really want to be involved. And I'm like, absolutely. So I have the, I have the form work right here that I have awesome. to create uh, and fill out for next year. And I'm going to be the advisor. And, and that's one of the agenda items is to how can we engage and get everybody involved from the elementaries as future Plasky High School Red Raiders. That's amazing. Congrats. That's very cool. That's awesome. And yeah, getting students, Heather says, love the idea for sharing elementary content as future students, et cetera. Okay. So let's talk about the future. So the club um, is happening. You're getting middle school and then maybe touch on kind of student voice, um, the education piece and what you're seeing there and what you're excited about um, for upcoming school year and any advice and we'll probably wrap things up here. So I'm a big believer, obviously, in students having a voice. It is their high school. Um, it, Twitter is the, the worldwide convention that everybody can, can get a voice on. And I guess my, my vision is to really increase our power users. I'd like to see our power, power users be in the 10 neighborhood. Um, I would also, and this is where the club is going to come in next year, is have a little bit more of an agenda as far as uh, who's going to cover what right now um, because I have a flexible schedule I'm able to meet with these students on just a piece-by-piece -piece basis but I 
I envision us meeting every two weeks and kind of saying, all right, what are the things? And that's kind of, I think how Heather takes care of it. And I could be wrong, but I got that idea from someone, but just try to, try to create an agenda and along with that agenda, really teaching them about engagement. So if someone responds right. to you, say thank you. If someone, cause it's not just about pumping our agenda out to the world. It's right. about uh, just really enveloping our entire community on social media. So when we, we have more regulated times, I swing in that route. Yeah, I think communication and building it into a team, we've seen a lot of success with all three of you that are on, Josh, Heather, and Clay, is, is that's how you get the students to, to buy in. And so that's, if we take away anything, you had a lot of good little Instagram quotes I think we'll pull from this. Um, you know, it's your, it's your high school, it's your story. I love the adult-driven Twitter life compared to a student-driven kind of Twitter life. That's, that's really good. And just we need more of it. And it's, it's, we're, we're going to look back at these Zooms and go, wow, we were way ahead of the game, right, um, be getting students involved and because social media is, is so relevant. And, and that's why we started is to, to get students involved in this process because now there are people like your son who we're going to interview for the podcast that are taking over these Twitter accounts and – you know, he didn't get this experience when he was in high school and what advantage, you know, career wise, these kids that are getting this um, are, are going to have, which is, gets me excited. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Uh, one of uh, one of our power users, uh, Brock G, he uh, he created a uh, he's like, could I write a newspaper article about this? And yeah. I'm like, Absolutely. And that's where he kind of came up with, you know, all these clubs are run by kids, uh, but yet our social media was run by adults, which. Yeah. Um, class on intercom and, and it, it's just an amazing filtering tool that allows our kids to have voice yet still within that confines of adult supervision which is really what high school is about yeah. uh, my, my son just got back from college and he didn't have adult supervision all the time but during high school he did and he learned how to cope with things and that kind of stuff and that's still what we want our kids to be able to do uh, in the high school setting, have have somewhat of a mentor, because when they leave here, they may not have that mentor. And so all of the experiences that they have, including social media, is uh, what Class Intercom brings to us as a powerful tool. Awesome. Well, any questions, Heather or Josh? I know Josh can't speak, um, but Heather, any any thoughts you want to add to what Clay said? A lot of great stuff there. I just want to say one thing too is um, I, I'm really thankful that Heather, that Josh and Craig, that they shared their stories because if they wouldn't have shared their stories, we wouldn't be the first uh, high school in the state of Wisconsin using class intercom. Uh, I learned from them and they gave me ideas. And fortunately uh, my supervisor said, yep, go for it. And now we're going for it. And I believe that our high school community is better for it. Awesome. Well, thank you, Clay. Um, look forward to sharing this recording with everyone. And um, have a when do you guys get out get out of school here? Another you have to go like a couple weeks extra for all the days you missed. Um, interesting. Uh, we don't. We've built in enough uh, time, but we originally do not get out until June eighth, I believe. Holy so, smokes! Yeah. So that fun fact: uh, there's a a law in Wisconsin you can't start before Labor Day. So uh, because of that, then we don't start till. Uh, after Labor Day and subsequently move forward. But I heard about that with uh, Minnesota too. They start way late. Yep. Yep. Because they're state fair or something. You yep. guys are crazy up there. We'll, we'll keep, we'll get out like Heather's like done in 48 hours probably, but then the <laughs> real work begins, right? Yeah, Summer. exactly. Well, awesome. thanks for having me on. I truly appreciate it. And if there are any, if there are any people out there that want to get in touch with any of us, Class Intercom is the way to go. It is worth every penny, and um, it just allows our students to tell their story, which is so very important. Awesome. Why don't you tell people where they can find you, Clay, on, on social, your, uh, your Twitter handle and stuff? You bet. So uh, Recess Duty, um, which is my Twitter handle, which uh, in 2008, I, for whatever reason, I didn't want to use my real name. And I hated Recess Duty, but Twitter was really, really fun. So that balanced it out. Uh, so you can find me at Recess Duty. I'm on Instagram. Uh, just 
ClayRisler.com. I, I will share whatever I can to help, as all of us usually are able to do, and that just moves the whole entire educational process forward. Awesome, and he's got a podcast as well, Advantage. Yep. Uh, I'm inspired by Josh and several other people. So keep up the great work up there and can't wait to meet you when you come down to Nebraska. Awesome. Thank you, Heather, for joining us and Josh as well. Thank you, Taylor. All right. See ya. I'm going to stop the recording here.